so we have the privilege of having Dr. Abhay Bang, who is the director for the Society for Education, Action and Research in Community Health, SEARCH, co-founded in 1985 with his wife, Dr. Rani Bang, in a re very remote district of India, Gachiroli, Maharashtra, where they live and provide medical care and conduct research in 150 villages. They have developed a new approach, the home-based newborn and child care, which has reduced infant mortality rate. He and his organization have received numerous awards, including the Mahatma Gandhi Award, Maharashtra Bhushan, the National Award from the Indian Council of Medical Research, <coughs> and he has also and have also been honored by Save the Children and by the MacArthur Foundation. Forgive me. Uh, Abhay and Rani were honored by the Time magazine as Global Health Heroes in 2005 and by the World Health Organization as the Public Health Champion. He was a member of India's National Commission on Population, the National Commission on Macroeconomics and Health, the High Level Expert Group on Universal Health Coverage, and the High Level Committee on Tribal People. He is currently a member of the Central Health Council, Government of India, and Chairman of the, of the Expert Committee of Tribal Health. Abey and Rani Bang were recently awarded, honored by the President of India with the Padma Shri Award. Ladies and gentlemen, students, everyone, please give a big hand to Dr. Abey Bang as he takes us through public health for the people, by the people. So over to you. Thank you, friends. I must begin by confessing two things. First is that I am very pleased that the audience, senior scientists who, do, who don't need to listen to me have vacated the front rows and the young people who probably would be benefited by listening to me have occupied their seats. So welcome the next generation. I also want to thank Anurag uh, for two things. One for the beautiful lecture. It opened so many new possibilities and new things in my own mind and also for mentioning my name repeatedly so that these young people have stayed, have stayed on. <laughs> Thank you so much. So what I intend to do is to talk about a little different topic. Most of the discussion and the presentations here have been about the basic sciences, digital sciences, artificial intelligence, all very important, very important. The question is, what do you do with that? As Anurag did mention, the ultimate purpose is not digital, but it is health. Similarly, the ultimate purpose of the health is not the health, but the people. And so, what I am going to talk is public health for the people, by the people. Now, how does it move? Let's see. Okay. So I'll, I'll begin by posing this question before all of you. This question not only the Prime Minister Narendra Modi is facing or Vinod Paul is facing, but all of you also will be facing. And especially the COVID pandemic has, has made all of us very acutely aware about this question. The challenge of healthcare in India. It is not about one medicine or one vaccine or one drug. It is how to provide accessible and affordable health care to 1.4 billion people of India living in nearly 1 million locations, villages, hamlets and towns. This is the fundamental question which we need to address. And most of the research that we do in the basic sciences or applied sciences or translational sciences essentially need to address this huge, huge, gigantic question. What I'll do, I'm going to share three stories with you and then share some of my reflections about public health care model for India. Now this, let me take you to an unknown theatre, theatre where most of these stories happened and that place is the dark red area that you see at the centre. This place 
it is gadchiroli district part of maharashtra but 1000 kilometers away from mumbai a very backward semi tribal district with about 1500 villages huge distances little transport little te telecommunication so the challenge gadchiroli posed or poses is same that india faces how to provide health care to such huge population located in different places now here you see under a mahua tree some wooden deities one is called marai devta another is called gad devta in gadchiroli what do they represent apart from the devtas devis and devtas they are named after actually they represent lack of health care because health care is not accessible not available people need some consolation that they did something for their near and dear before they were sick or before they died and so these gods and goddesses have emerged as a sort of placebo as a sort of mental solution but they point out to a very serious public health disease that we are unable to provide accessible health care to the people and gadchiroli also intermittently hears huge bomb blasts with naxalite movement active there and so this all these things together make what is called gadchiroli almost at the center of gadchiroli within a dense forest is our headquarter campus we call it shodha gram taking inspiration from mahatma gandhi seva gram which was for seva we here want to discover and invent new things so that we can do better seva so this is called shodha gram this is where we live and this is where from where all these things happen now my wife rani and i having completed our medicine and gynecological studies in india and then having studied public health in the us in 1984 came back to india decided to settle and work in gadchiroli in the second month of our stay this girl was referred to me as suspected case of rheumatic fever heart disease because there was some murmur in her heart now i thought that she probably was not a case of heart disease but she had a relatively uncommon disease called sickle cell disease now sickle cell disease till then had not been never been reported from gadchiroli i established a blood test and you can see these are the round red blood cells but few amongst them have become concave like a sickle so this disease in which blood cells become sickle shaped and then produce lot of clinical symptoms like severe anemia severe painful crises so she turned out to be a sickle case now go back to 1986 i am a young scientist of 35 year old recently come back from the us so my first impulse was aha i have discovered something i must publish this i must report this and so out of this that intellectual itch we conducted a district sample survey as to how many people in the district had sickle cell gene and we took drop of blood solubility test sickle test and electrophoresis and the findings we found that 15% population in the district had sickle cell gene but less than 1% had a severe disease called sickle homozygous these findings were presented to the minister he hugely applauded later on gave me an award also first award of my life this was published but nothing happened nothing was done for sickle and nothing was done for the tribal people of gadchiroli so we went back to the tribal wise men in the villages tribal leaders and said that look we found sickle cell disease in you but government is not doing anything you should do something you should raise your voice tribal people blankly looked at us and they asked me doctor did we ever tell you that sickle is our problem 
you discovered that problem you came you asked for a drop of blood we thought why disappoint this young doctor couple so we gave you a drop of blood we have nothing more to do with this is that that you call sickle you discovered it you solve it we had our very serious lesson about scientific research that that research should address the needs of the community i work with and not the research community i report to with all the scientist we have we are when are when are we talking with the patients with the people actually mentally we are we are presenting in some conference we are analyzing our data we are writing research publications and so most of our research ideas research projects discoveries all happen not usually in response to what the community i work with what they need but will i get a publication will i get a research grant will i get some award gradually taught us that that is futile it doesn't bring in any change and so since then we decided that hereafter that is 1987 we will not conduct any research which which doesn't help directly the people of gadchuli so that was the first ethical or, or moral lesson that we learned in this field of research so then next question then what do people need now what people of gadchuli need cannot be found in the research journal published in the us or in the uk and so we started asking the people going to the tribal villages in the night sitting around night fire and then rani and i used to ask them what are your main health problems what do you need from us and then finally we called a tribal health assembly in which representatives from 50 tribal villages were invited and then for 3 days we asked them what do you need what are your health problems which you want us to solve finally we gave them votes three votes to each tribal you vote and tell us what are your most important three health concern now look at the results and this is 19 around 1990 the people's priorities were malaria back pain alcohol and alcoholism amongst men our children die now these four priorities have provided us next 20 years public health research agenda when we went by my intellectual itch sickle cell which people didn't think was was bothering them you saw what happened here the priorities that people have mentioned of course malaria and child death was recognized even at that time but back pain and alcohol it took the global burden of disease study in 2018 to conclude that back pain is one of the most common morbidities world over low back pain and neck pain and that alcohol and tobacco are among seven top risk factors producing death and disease world over people told us nearly 27 years ahead of the global burden of disease study which used nearly 4 billion people's health data and so it is useful to ask people what are their health priorities now as you saw i am going to deal only with two of the priorities that they mention they said our children die so the best way to verify this and also to know the cause we established a sort of laboratory research project population based research project in 100 villages measured all child births in that one year also counted all child deaths and we came to conclusion that in 1988 infant mortality rate was 121 what is infant mortality rate if 1000 babies are born alive how many of them die within one year now this infant mortality rate in western countries is less than 10 in kerala and goa it is around 10 in gadchiroli it was 121 and why did children die 
the most important cause at that time was childhood pneumonia out of the total childhood deaths 40% were attributable because of pneumonia now a child with pneumonia in a village hut is a very miserable scene it's almost child is panting for breath gasping for breath drowning as if and then parents couldn't do anything they didn't know that something could be done in their language there was a word called dabba so they called this dabba and dabba was a very serious disease but nothing could be done and so our first priority was antibiotics have been had been discovered nearly 30 40 years ago but how do you take this antibiotic to children with pneumonia naturally second question is children continue to have cough and cold how do you distinguish and at that time there was no ai so how do you distinguish between common cough and cold and pneumonia when a child has cough counting respiratory rate how many times the child with cough breathes that allows you to to categorize child with pneumonia without pneumonia so if you don't have doctors if you don't have x rays if you don't have stethoscopes still counting breaths per minute can help you decide whether child has pneumonia or no pneumonia i developed this simple equipment which i called it breath counter you can see two ro- two rows in the breath counter one the lower one is for the newborn baby uh, upper one is for the newborn baby with six beads lower one is for the infant beyond two months of age and there is a one minute sand timer the idea was that a rural woman a, a, a traditional birth attendant a mother a sister or aunt who doesn't know how to count more than 10 who doesn't have wrist watch and who doesn't have any access to medical facility should be able to diagnose pneumonia using this abacus and sand timer for every counted 10 breaths she would move the one bead if the red bead moved before the sand had completely passed which means before one minute was completed if the red bead was moved that was the cut off for pneumonia and when i compared this on 50 children i diagnosed 50 children with cough in my opd i diagnosed with x with stethoscope and x ray and they diagnosed with this breath counter their diagnosis was it matched 82% time with my diagnosis very good so an 82% doctor could be made available in the village as far as diagnosis of pneumonia was concerned they were given oral antibiotics by the trained community health workers and look at the effect on the mortality rate before this became available this kind of childhood pneumonia cases 13.5% died with this pneumonia diagnosis and treatment made available in the villages through community health workers the mortality rate fell down to less than 1% and our workers have treated nearly 15000 children with pneumonia in the past nearly 30 years with case fatality persistently less than 1% this study was published in the lancet and that study showed that the infant mortality rate which was at the baseline 121 as i said with this one single intervention it came down to 76 wonderful and not only it was published in the lancet but it became one of the evidence for shaping the global ari control program the next challenge but children continue to die but at the lesser proportion infant mortality rate still was around 76 and 80 who were who were these children who were dying they were mostly newborn babies newborn baby in rural area in that rural home or hut i don't think you would have had any chance to visit such baby 
but it is the most fragile and vulnerable human being that you can ever imagine recently born delicate unprotected mother doesn't have knowledge mother doesn't have money there is no medical care available ordinary health science knowledge hasn't reached there and so during the human life the first one month of life is probably the period of highest risk and highest mortality how do you provide care to them in that home delivery room you can see that mother lying on the chair pai and this old woman who could be the traditional birth attendant or grandmother giving bath to that baby cow dung plastered floor so billions of bacteria floating there around these babies would become infected hypothermic hypoglycemic and many of them would die and the tradition did not allow these mothers to step out of that home delivery room nazar lag jayegi black magic ho jayega and the nearest hospital for newborn care was 200 kilometers away so the challenge was how can you take medical science already established already proven but how can you take that medical science in a simplified form but make it accessible to nearly 2.5 crore newborn babies born every year in india at that time nearly 5 million neonates died world over and so our challenge was this so we used what china chinese first health congress set as its own health principle guiding guideline and that was how far a mother on foot can walk with a sick baby in her arms healthcare must be available within that distance for these newborn babies and their mother who had recently just delivered that distance was the door step they were not allowed to step out so the care must be made available at home and with that idea we turned the science of neonatology and pediatrics upside down and designed this home based neonatal care simplified form of newborn care which could be made available at home in the villages who would provide that she is kaju bai kaju bai is a dalit woman from a village called ambeshivani in our area seven standard fail husband alcoholic and a case of pulmonary tuberculosis kaju bai had a tremendous drive to do something for her village her community she she couldn't study beyond 7th but she had passion to study we selected 39 such women one from each village 39 villages were selected as a part of experiment if we provide home based newborn care in 39 intervention villages and in 47 control villages government programs continue as they are health programs does this make any difference to newborn mortality so 39 village health workers we call them arogya doot were trained to make home visits where women delivered ask history to mother examine the baby weigh them measure the temperature count the respiratory rate record all this decide whether baby is low birth weight preterm and provide high base, high risk care preterm babies low birth weight babies twin babies were kept like this at the home and you can see they are exposed house flies are sitting on them we didn't have electricity we didn't have incubator so we we prepared this kind of warm bags in which babies could be kept if necessary babies were given antibiotics also look at the result of this experiment now this is neonatal mortality rate which means 1000 babies born how many die within first one month itself the yellow line is out the of the government program area which is adjacent and very similar at the baseline as you can see two areas are very similar at the baseline 60 babies died out of 1000 babies born and the irony is from 1993 to 2003 that newborn mortality rate has remained almost same around 60 in the government program area which represented rural india that's what was the natural scenario all over india the blue line is those 39 villages where home based newborn care was provided by these community health workers 
at the baseline it was 62 within 3 year it came down to 26 and then trial was over and it had it has continued so so 70% reduction as compared to the control group that is government program area this showed that you could save newborns in villages even in the prevailing situation look at the effect on infant mortality rate which is deaths up to one year of age to begin with it was 120, 121 in 1988 with pneumonia treatment it came down to around 80 and with newborn care it reduced and reduced and reduced and finally settled at the level of 30 in 2003 India's IMR rural IMR is now just touching 30 in 2022 and these 39 remote backward villages of Garcholi they achieved that IMR up to of 30 nearly 20 years earlier now who made this miracle it is the same Kaju by 20 years later and this simple equipments and that she can carry on this Shabnam bag shoulder bag equipments cost 1500 rupees so with those equipments with knowledge in her head skills in her hands and compassion in her heart this trained community health worker can practically become a newborn hospital a mobile newborn hospital a primary level hospital though but the results that they achieved are very similar to the secondary level newborn care hospitals in India as comparison of data published by the neonatal forum of India national neonatal forum and data from Serge Gadchiroli so they are very effective now this type of women are available in every village in India you don't need Nobel Prize winners for that Nobel Prize winners have done their job. They have discovered basic things. They have discovered molecule of penicillin or subsequent antibiotics. The subsequent task is who is going to take these fruits of science and technology to the places where they are needed and to the people or the individuals who need these. Kajubai or 39 community health workers or women like these are present everywhere in every village of India of Bangladesh, of Nepal, of Pakistan, of Africa, of Latin America the necessary human potential is already there and that's why this approach is basically an empowerment approach that hut was dark that woman, that mother was alone, helpless trying to protect that baby open that one window of knowledge one window of opportunity training few equipments few medicines and that woman becomes empowered and she can take care of the baby at the bosom and the entire family's health on her empowered hands so essentially this study was first published in the Lancet in 1999 but subsequently Lancet selected this as one of the vintage papers published in the 180 years history of the Lancet to be included in this volume called Vintage Papers from the Lantis, Lancet. Now it is, it is the power of the science that this approach which otherwise no politician would have touched, no doctor would have touched that the newborns who, are, who were sick could be provided care by trained semi-literate community health workers. But because it was done like an experiment with a solid evidence and was published internationally, government of India picked it up after repeated trials and replications of this through ICMR. This approach was picked up for the national scale up. India needed it. Every year, nearly 2.5 million children were dying in India, mainly from neonatal deaths and childhood pneumonia. And so this approach of selecting one village woman, training her as a Asha and about 10 lakh Ashas, their training, the responsibility to train them in home based mother newborn child care was interested to search. So we converted this simple science, 
simpler and how to train 1 million ashas all over india to deliver this care it has now reached everywhere practically in every village in india all, also to nepal bangladesh pakistan several countries in africa the the issues health issues are dynamic they go on changing so child mortality was controlled but remember another problem that people had mentioned was of alcohol alcohol and alcoholism amongst men the younger generation in hyderabad may not remember but the women of telangana in 1990s had made a revolution and had stopped all alcohol in the andhra pradesh at the combined state at that time so women have always suffered because of alcohol heavily suffered domestic violence economic loss because husband doesn't contribute money to the family income the global burden of disease study in 2018 reports that alcohol and tobacco are two of the top seven causes which cause death disease and disability which means now alcohol and tobacco are the modern cholera and plague they need to be controlled so after child mortality this was the subsequent challenge based on what people had reported that alcohol is our problem this went our struggle with the alcohol and tobacco went through three phases let me come to the third phase that is called muktipath and the aim here is to reduce prevalence of tobacco and alcohol consumption in the population and to reduce money spent on it and we have designed a district pilot which is operational in the entire district of Gadchiroli with integrated four prong strategy the first strategy is widespread awareness about alcohol and tobacco and its ill effect the second strategy is de-addiction in the village itself every village has got 15-20 addicts of alcoholics de-addiction therapy in the village implementation of the government restrictions on tobacco and alcohol and finally mobilizing village community especially women to fight for public health now public health usually unfortunately has become health without public it is delivered through vertical programs it is delivered through government or it is delivered through private channels but then where is public for on this issue of reducing alcohol and saving women's dignity women of gadchiroli came forward and out of 1500 villages in gadchiroli in 1100 villages women have formed women's association against alcohol and they fight to stop alcohol in their own village they have formed vigilance groups they have passed resolutions of the gram sabhas that no alcohol will be allowed in their in their village and when the any illicit alcohol is sold they immediately raid it and stop it if they cannot they seek help from the police so this is the four point program every year we monitor impact by our district sample survey and i'm just sharing with you only one impact at the baseline in 2015-16 nearly 41% men in gadchiroli drank alcohol and they spent and the estimated number of alcohol drinkers in the district was nearly 1.5 lakh or 1 1 lakh 58000 and they spent out of pocket expenditure money spent for purchasing alcohol nearly 80 crore rupees 799 million rupees so this was the baseline problem now look at the effect the annual district sample survey you can ignore the intervening numbers but you can just look at the baseline 41 percent people men consuming alcohol in the last year 2021 that we have survey reports 25 percent men are now consuming alcohol 
this means that nearly 38% of consumers have ceased to consume alcohol drinking it means 61000 men in district alcohol drinkers have stopped drinking and its net effect out of money spent on alcohol it was nearly 80 crore rupees this is in million rupees so 799 million rupees from that it has come down to 400 rupees so nearly 50% reduction in the money spent on alcohol so public health challenge which people identified in people's health assembly but here a single vaccine single medicine doesn't help so it needed an integrated public health approach in which women massively participated in 1100 villages and that produced impact which is practically unheard of bihar government several governments are struggling with the issue how to control alcohol and how to implement prohibition successfully the global burden of disease study and now subsequently the lancet study and who statement very clearly state that a single drop of alcohol is also beginning of the risk so zero alcohol is the ideal state for public health we may now gradually we may now gradually or already achieving it so let's come back to the original problem that we started with how to provide health care to 1.4 billion people of india living in different locations this is the public health model which emerges from the stories that i shared with you i won't read it out you can quickly read them but these are the characteristics of any public health model which is people sensitive and which is used by people now the challenge is which government of india is facing this who is repeatedly harping how to provide universal health care to all indians now we have economically cost wise i am just rounding off figures for simplicity health care cost in india private as well as public together are around 5% of the gdp and per capita expenditure on health is about 100 dollars at the ppp now the model that we are trying to imitate is the us medical care model and there they spend 9000 dollars per capita per year india spends 100 dollars per capita per year us spends 17% of their gdp their gdp is already several fold higher than india they spend 17% of gdp we spend about 5% of gdp and mckinsey company has made this calculated this projections that with the current rate of increasing medical technology every day new discoveries are happening but there are cost labels on every new discovery so at the current rate of growth of medical science and solutions and at the current rate of increasing cost the us will be spending in 2010 it is spending 70% of its gdp by 2099 it will be spending 97% of its gdp on healthcare now this is impossible if you spend 97% on healthcare what do you eat how do you teach, give education to your children how do you run your transport so this is an impossibility but the current trajectory of healthcare and medical discovery and science and technology and its cost implications this is what not abai bank calculating this is what mckinsey has calculated the projections so medical care models from the west are wasteful we of course need knowledge science but we need to develop indian models for providing public health health care to our people and so what is the alternative vision the best way to provide universal health care to now 1.4 billion population of india is to generate universal capacity in the communities to care for health it is not that the government should provide health care to 1.4 billion people 
बट जनरेट कैपेसिटी ऑफ केयर इन द 1.4 बिलियन पीपल और 1 मिलियन कम्युनिटीज सो दिस इज द काइंड ऑफ हेल्थ केयर मॉडल व्हिच इमर्जेस आई कॉल इट आरोग्य स्वराज्य बिकॉज इट शुड नॉट बी डिपेंडेंट हेविली ऑन गवर्नमेंट शुड नॉट बी डिपेंडेंट हेविली on outsiders hospitals doctors as far as possible it will be self empowered autonomous model so the lower third control of social determinants the middle third empowerment of the individuals and families and behavior change and lifestyle top one third still lot of co- that community based care the kaju bais and that kind of workers and then finally small role for hospital this kind of model is financially possible to sustain it is feasible to deliver because we have the most important resource the human resource and this is this gives autonomy to people they don't have to depend depend on any government medical insurance scheme or stand in a queues so this model is swastha model now swastha is a word in india in hindi sanskrit for being healthy so who is healthy one who is swastha swastha means jo swa mein sthit hai wo swastha hai one who is self reliant one who doesn't depend on others so indian definition of health is embedded in the very word for health and that is swastha and it it has the concept of health in india traditionally it is linked with autonomy and responsibility it's not like medical insurance that i i smoke tobacco and you pay for my health care it is an empowering concept swastha so that kind of arogya swarajya should be our vision instead of a dependence model dependence on drugs doctors hospitals or companies or government subsidies or insurance care models because every dependence is a political disease you 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 mortgage your autonomy and freedom when you borrow something from from somebody else there is no free lunch in this world and hence for health care we need a public health care model where you you don't have to bargain your freedom your liberation your autonomy for it this would be what i love to call arogya swaraj now the final question how to conduct research so that arogya swaraj model develops and it reaches out to every place in india now most of the research publications or research projects what happens the researcher gets the grant the researcher gets the publication the researcher gets the credit awards everything fine we have no complaint against that but what do people get they are researched upon they hardly get anything once the research is over the researcher does tata bye bye to the patients and moves ahead for next research project so we need approach to research in which people are also enriched they are also empowered and they are not merely used secondly now knowledge and research have become the fountains of power throughout this conference we are hearing we are witnessing the power of science research technology new knowledge one who will develop new knowledge will own the world so who will own, own the world not even researchers those who finance the researchers will ultimately own the world if we don't want that to happen we need some different models of research i have conceived this four stages of research on the axis of more and more role for the people one is research on the people this is quite widely prevalent model in which we researchers do research on the people we are not much interested our primary goal is not the people but the research project study grant etc and i am ashamed to admit 
that our first research sickle cell disease research was unfortunately a research on the people that's why people said we have nothing to do with it doesn't benefit us it's not our problem at all that was research on the people but it taught us the lesson next stage could be research for the people a lot of public health research is really research for the people vaccines medicine diagnostics research for the people but then people are hardly involved in that so they become mere recipient so the third stage could be should be research with the people and the stories that i shared with you about public health research done in gadchiroli i think i i wish that this this research represent research with the people research was for the people but in which people participated they were the main doers and they were the main beneficiary but finally if research is the source of power and wealth we should dream for a day a utopia where research will be done by the people every human being can become researcher potentially there is no difference in me and a child born in some remote village of telangana all of us have same neuronal network same human brains similar chromosomes and genes so anybody it should be possible that every mother conducts research in her kitchen every father conducts some research on childhood development and growth and education every farmer conducts some research in his field on agriculture every teacher conducts some research on education in her classroom research by the people that should be the ultimate goal research with the people but right now what we are doing is only up to the stage of research with the people people should understand it people should participate in doing it people should use it and finally people should own it and people should need it it shouldn't become sickle cell study that people said that we have nothing to do with so friends thank you very much for listening these stories and some reflection on this story but as you know search never stops search for knowledge search for new solutions is never ending and that's why this is the logo of my organization search thank you so much thank you so much sir questions from the audience so uh, a question that i had is uh, is it possible to supplement your model with uh, new technologies such as virtual health uh, you know which could reach all these villages i'm sure garchori now must be having electricity and a uh, good number of people have cell phones other things is it possible to supplement your uh, model it's a great question and when i was listening to anurag in the previous session at the back of mind i was constantly thinking as to artificial intelligence how can it be made available to the villagers to the community health workers so you, your question is extremely pertinent and uh, this research approach can now be very much strengthened let me take simple example now we developed that breath counter but now there is a pulse oximeter and pulse oximeter is a modern technology but it directly measures oxygen concentration so you don't have to count even respiratory rate so with mobile phones and newer applications counting heart rate and heart rate irregularity even blood glucose some day i am hoping that like oxygen concentration can be assessed without piercing the finger similarly probably blood glucose also would be and same might happen to various other infectious diseases also so yes the emerging diagnostics knowledge technologies mobile phones will be extremely useful to supplement our community health workers and to make people more autonomous but there is only one hitch 
and that hitches all these ais and pulse oximeters and mobile phones and softwares are again owned by somebody else so there is a sense of dependence so the challenge is our human beings are best machines prepared by the millions of years of evolution they already have intelligence we don't want to bypass them ignore them and go after artificial intelligence and then buy with a heavy price so how do we make best use of the intelligence which is already available so the challenge is how do we make use of the natural intelligence and supplement it with artificial intelligence that balance is very crucial we should not we cannot deny the modern science research technologies but they should supplement and not supplant not replace the human beings thank you for that very good question thank you sir any more questions yes a young man on the side well um in a country of 1.2 billion people i am curious about how we're meant to provide the funding for such healthcare as you said a lot of public health problems are in rural communities where there is rampant crime, poverty, low pay, and very little access to proper infrastructure like sewage or like you said healthcare. So how would you recommend we fund all of this? Are you thinking of public funding, paying like as in donations, taxation, or private donations like say from pharma companies or others? Well, very crucial question. and the younger generation is too economics conscious than my generation was so when we went to gadchuli we had no source of fund but i must tell you based on my 40 50 years of experience that if you have a good idea and some way of showing that you have some method also which is credible there is no dearth of funds funds are never a primary problem you do need funds but with a population which needs solution with a problem waiting for solutions if you have good ideas funds follow now they follow from whom they follow from institute agencies like indian council of medical research they follow from international organizations they follow from csr funds in india increasingly csr has become a major source of funding they also come from individual donations from the middle class in india now india has a huge middle class and it has surplus money and a growing sense of altruism in the middle class can can also become a source of fund but there is another side to it and that is a researcher ethically should cut down his necessities and his, his consumption as much as possible if you reduce your needs you become more free because no funds come without conditions explicitly or implicitly there are always some control some expectations so you do need funds from outside outside of the village but at the same time try to do research at the low cost at the lowest cost possible so that your dependence on the outside fund is is also not improportional any more questions uh good morning that's a fantastic uh, you know approach to public health uh but then i'm curious to know how can you hold it closer yeah uh, i'm curious to know how you'll be able to affect the health behaviors of people which is very difficult like especially alcohol or addiction it's very much easier than said, uh, said than done right i take first the easier change of behavior as you saw in that home delivery room the newborn babies were kept naked in gadchuroli they didn't use any baby clothes till 12th day of the why 12th day because children often newborn mortality is very high in the first one week why waste clothes if baby dies now we had to convince mothers and families 
that your babies won't die or will have the lesser risk of death if you cover them with clothes. Now nobody wants, no parents want their babies to die. Earlier they were, they were using a simple economics and then it was embedded in belief system that if clothes are put in, babies become sick. It was easier to convince them. First, earlier, for three days, mothers did not breastfeed the babies. That was a traditional practice all over India. But we could convince them that the cow, she starts feeding the calf within first one hour. How come your babies don't need milk for three days? They do need. They are crying. But you are depriving them of the milk. Now, these changes in behavior were very much based on biological instinct. So, were relatively easier to change. Alcohol is harder to change. It's not merely behavior, but it's all addiction. It's a compulsive behavior. You have become a chemical slave of alcohol. Your brain doesn't function without a kick from alcohol. There it is, yes, it is much tough to change the behavior. So there, building social pressure, cutting down the availability of alcohol, and those who are alcoholic, helping them with de-addiction therapy. So we had to use multiple strategies, and yet you can see that the problem has reduced by nearly one third only. Two third of the problem is still there. So some behaviors are relatively easier to change. It does take effort. It required us nearly three years to change with behaviors in relation to newborns. In case of alcohol, even after seven years, only one third people have quit. Those who were drinking, only one third have quit. Uh, is there any advice you could give us, uh, young doctors, how we can contribute more to the public health? It's really, really inspiring, the whole talk. Well, this is a very crucial question and I'm happy that there are at least few young doctors here to listen. Well, if I look back, and not only I look back, but if you look at the several other people, Ronald Ross was born in Britain, but he made his greatest discovery in Sikandarabad. Why the hell he should come to Sikandarabad? Because the problem, malaria was here. It was not in the Britain. Ross wouldn't have become the Ross if he had not come to India and not come to Andhra Pradesh or Telangana where malaria was rife. Robert Koch, he was trying to work on cholera. So he heard that there was cholera epidemic in Egypt. So from Europe he sailed, went to Egypt. By the time he reached Egypt, Cholera epidemic had vanished. So in the same ship, he came to India. And it is in India that Robert Koch made that discovery. Vibrio cholerae cause cholera. Now discoveries happen when the thinking mind, inquiring minds go where the problems are. If inquiring mind, thinking mind, intelligent mind, young doctors, young researchers, they sit only in air-conditioned room in front of computer screen, they will receive a lot of in internet entertainment. But where is the problem? And so my advice, you ask me for advice, with my white beard, I, I, I can take that role. I will advise young doctors to go where the problems are and not where the facilities are. Because places of facilities are saturated with doctors. They don't need you. You have to stand in a long queue in, the, in those places. And you are in the end in the queue. I am also here, neat exam, give me MD admission. You, ap you appear for twice, thrice, several times for the examination. Vinoba Bhave once once gave a master stroke solution. He said, if you are instead of standing at the end of the queue, lifelong, your, your UPSC examination, lifelong queues, millions of young Indians are standing there 
without ever having any hope of any result. So, if you are standing at the end of the queue, just make one 180 degree turn, change your direction, change your goalpost, and you become the first. It is very easy to become a pioneer. Only thing required is change your goalpost, your direction by 180 degree and face the direction in, in which the problems are waiting for you to be solved. So go to the places where problems are waiting for you. Thank you. Very good question.